In this unit, we're going to be looking at sequences and series. In this particular video, we're only going to be looking at sequences. Simply put, a sequence is a pattern of numbers. And there's all kinds of different sequences that do exist. In this video, we're only going to be looking at two types of sequences. One is called an arithmetic sequence, the other is called a geometric sequence. A sequence is called an arithmetic sequence if the difference of any two consecutive terms is constant. This difference is called the common difference. All right, so here's three examples of sequences that we would consider arithmetic sequences. They do have a common difference. Be thinking of difference as subtraction. So as you move from one term to the next, what you could do is figure out the amount that you're either adding or subtracting to get to the next term. The easiest way to do this, and sometimes the easiest way to test to see if you even have an arithmetic sequence, is to take consecutive terms and just subtract them. For example, if I take six and subtract two, I get four. If I take 10 and subtract six, I also get four. And the same is true for the rest of these. 14 minus 10 is four. 18 minus 14 is also gonna be four. So the common difference that we get here is four. For the second sequence, we're going from 17 to 10 to three. These are decreasing. That does not mean that you can't call this an arithmetic sequence because you don't have a constant difference. It's just that we're gonna be subtracting a negative number. Okay, so if I took 10, subtract 17, I'm gonna get negative seven. That would be the common difference, which is gonna hold true for the rest of these. If we take three and subtract 10, we also get negative seven, or if you take negative four and subtract three, you get negative seven, and so on. Even negative 18 minus negative 11 is gonna give you a difference of negative seven. For the last, what we're gonna do is look at this in terms of variables. You start with a, and then you end up with a plus d, which means that the second term has increased by a value of d. The next term is gonna be a plus 2d, which means that you've increased the second term by another d. Moving on to the fourth term, you're gonna have plus 3d, which means that you've also increased by d again. So the constant difference is gonna be d. And of course, d could be a positive or negative number. In this case, it appears as though it's positive, but it could fit the script of a negative number, right? It could actually end up being a plus a negative number, which is like a minus a number. These are examples of arithmetic sequences. The second type of sequence that we're gonna look at in this video is called a geometric sequence. And again, from the very beginning, I want you to understand that arithmetic and geometric sequences are not the only types of sequences that we have. There are all kinds of them that are out there. We're just looking at two very particular types in this video. A sequence is gonna be a geometric sequence if the ratio of any two consecutive terms is constant. By ratio, we should be thinking fraction, which makes us think about division. Okay, if we are to take two consecutive terms and divide them, if we get a constant value as you go across the sequence, that would tell us that we have a geometric sequence. The ratio will be the value that we think of as multiplying one term by to get to the next. Okay, so for the first, if we take three and divide it by one, of course we get three. If you take nine and divide it by three, you also get three, and the same is true for the rest of these. 27 divided by nine will be three. 81 divided by 27 will also be three. So the common ratio for that one will be three. But again, you can think of that as a factor that you apply to produce the next term. For example, 81 times three will give you 243. For the second sequence, we've got 64, negative 32, 16, negative eight, four. These are alternating between positive and negative. Okay, what that means is that your common ratio, that factor that you're gonna use is just a negative number. Okay, if I take negative 32 and divide it by 64, I get negative one half. The same thing will be true if you take 16 and divide it by negative 32. 16 is half of 32, positive divided by negative will give you negative. And for the others, Negative eight divided by 16 will also give you negative one half and four divided by negative eight is gonna give you negative one half as well. And for the last, also in terms of variables, the first term here is a, the second term is a times r. If you divide a times r by a, the a's cancel out and you get r. So the common ratio is r. Okay, and as you move along here, you could check all these with division, but it might be easier just to look at it as the fact that we're multiplying by an extra r. We start with a, we get a times r. We then get a times r squared. We get an r cubed and r to the fourth power. 
and that would be a geometric sequence. You're gonna see those as multiplying by a common number, and you can figure out what that value would be by just dividing consecutive terms. Next, what we're gonna do is talk about notation. The first term of a sequence is often denoted by T1. That would be T with a subscript of one. That'll be your first term. The second and third term by T2 and T3 and so on. So what we're gonna do is use subscripts to indicate what position a certain term would sit within that sequence. The nth term is denoted by Tn. So whatever term you're interested in, if it be the hundredth term, you'd call it T100. But in general, the nth term will be called Tn. If you have the formula for Tn in terms of n, you can find the value of any term in the sequence. The power of that is that it allows you to not go through the sequence to produce the nth term. You could actually just use the formula and get straight there. For example, one, suppose that Tn is equal to n squared plus one. Okay, so that'll be a formula that you can use to create any term in the sequence. What we're gonna do is find the first four terms, then determine if the sequence is arithmetic or geometric, or it could be neither. They do not have to be arithmetic or geometric. All right, so for T1, what we're gonna do is take the one and plug it in for the n value. So we get one squared plus one, which of course is gonna be equal to two. For T2, we're gonna plug the two in for the n, you're going to have 2 squared plus 1, which is going to give you 4 plus 1, which is 5. For T3, we're going to plug in the 3. You have 3 squared plus 1, which is going to be equal to 9 plus 1, which gives you a 10. And for our fourth term, we'll take 4 squared plus 1, which is going to equal 16 plus 1, or 17. Okay, this is a sequence that can be generated, but our follow-up question here is, is it arithmetic or geometric? Or is it possibly neither? Because it doesn't have to be both of these. To test these out, what we'll do is subtract consecutive terms to see if we get a common difference. That would tell us it's arithmetic if that happens. We'll also take consecutive terms, divide them to see if we get a constant value, which would then tell us that this is geometric. Okay, if we subtract, the difference here is gonna be three, the difference here is gonna be five, the difference here is gonna be seven that does create a neat pattern, which would really just be odd numbers, right? It's three, it's five, it's seven. But the differences are not constant, which means that it is not arithmetic. Okay, geometric, five divided by two is gonna give you 2.5. 10 divided by five is gonna give you two. Those are already different values, so we can determine it's not geometric, but you could even look at the third. 17 divided by 10 is not gonna be a two or a 2.5 for sure. Okay, so this sequence is not arithmetic or geometric. This would be neither. It would be neither. Most sequences are not arithmetic or geometric, but our focus is gonna begin with those two because there's a lot that we can learn from those two, which will help out with other types of sequences later. The general equation for an arithmetic sequence is gonna be Tn is equal to T1 plus N minus one times D. Okay, as an arithmetic sequence, what we're doing is constantly adding on the same value. So if you're interested in figuring out the nth term of the sequence, we need to know where we start, which is T1. We also need to know how much we're adding on, which is gonna be the D or common difference. And we need to know how many times we're gonna be adding it onto that first term. Okay, so if you're interested in getting the second term, what you're gonna do is take your first term and add on D once. Okay, so what we're gonna end up doing is plugging in the n value here. But when you plug in the n value, say you're looking for that second term. If you plug in a two here, you're gonna have two minus one, which will give you one. So it tells you to add on the d value once. Okay, you're not gonna wanna add the d value on n times because that would take you one spot further into sequence than you need to be. If you were interested in figuring out your fifth term, t5, you would start with your first term, t1, and you'd wanna increase it by d four more times. Okay, so by taking the five and plugging in for the n, when you subtract that one, it accounts for that common difference four times. Example two, find the formula of the nth term of the arithmetic sequence, three, five, seven. Then use that formula to figure out T20, the 20th term here. Okay, from the formula here, we need to know the first value. We need to know the first value, which is three. So that'll be your T1 plus n minus one, okay, so that part varies depending on the term that you want. Our case, it's gonna be the 20. Multiplied by the d value, 
the D value is gonna be the common difference that we see here, which is gonna be a positive two. Okay, so if we want T20, it's gonna be three plus 20 minus one times two. Okay, so that'll be three plus 19 times two, which that would be 38 plus three gives you 41. The general equation for a geometric sequence is not that much different than the arithmetic sequence. You still have to have a starting value T1, but instead of adding a certain amount over and over again, what you're gonna be doing is multiplying by a certain number over and over again, which you can show as times R to a certain power. That power is gonna be N minus one, like what we saw in the arithmetic sequence, because your first term is your first term. To get your second term, you wanna multiply by R only once. So if you were to plug in a two, you'd have two minus one, which means that the R value only counts once. Example three, find the formula for the nth term of the geometric sequence, three, 4.5, 6.75. Then use that formula to figure out T12. Okay, if this is a geometric sequence, we can use this as our outline. T1 is gonna be the three. To figure out the R value, what we're gonna do is divide consecutive terms. We'll start with 4.5, divide that by three, and we get 1.5 which should hold true for 6.75 divided by 4.5. And it does, we get 1.5. So the R value is 1.5. Your exponent is gonna be N minus one. Okay, so if we're interested in figuring out the 12th term, T12, we just have to plug in the 12 for the N which of course is gonna give you an exponent of an 11. Whoops, let's go ahead and change this to, let's go ahead and change that correctly to 1.5 so that I can evaluate this. Okay, we'll go to the calculator now. We're gonna take three times 1.5 to the 11th power which is gonna give you that value, which I guess we're gonna to need to round off a little bit here. This is gonna be approximately 259. And let's just use a couple of decimals, let's say four nine. This answer could also be represented as a fraction because all we're really doing is multiplying by three halves repetitively here. So you could write it this way we could convert that into a fraction, which will give you not, not a nice looking fraction either. Uh, let's see, 531,441 divided by 2,048. Same thing as that. Of course, at the very beginning, it did start in decimal format, which means this might be good enough. We can probably just keep that answer. For example four, we have one of my favorite questions. We're told that we have a geometric sequence and we're given a couple of terms. You get the third term and the sixth term. Okay, so you're not getting consecutive terms here. But we do know that it's geometric and there's a number that we're constantly multiplying by to produce these terms. We're then asked to figure out what the 11th term would be. Okay, to do this, I like to draw little blanks first. We don't need to go out to 11 because we actually started three. So let that be the third term, okay? So that'd be four. This would be the fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh term. Okay, just keep track of them. So the third term is 12. The sixth is 96. Okay, so there exists a value that if you multiply 12 by that value, you get the fourth term. You could then multiply again by that value to get the fifth term, multiply again to get the sixth term. So there's a certain value that if you multiply 12 by it three times, you're gonna end up getting 96. Now to keep the variables consistent with what we've done before, we could write this as 12 times R times R times R three times should give us 96. Of course, R times R times R is actually just R cubed. 
So if we can figure out what R is, if we can solve for R, we could actually just apply that enough times to get to the 11th term. Okay, let's divide out the 12. R cubed is gonna be equal to eight. The cube root of eight is two. All right, so let's just check this out to see if it works. If we take 12 and times it by two, we get 24. Okay, times that by two, you get 48. So we're thinking that this is 24. This would be 48 times two gives us 96. So the R value is two. Okay, we can continue that pattern down times two, you get 192 times two, you get 384, 768, 1536, and we get 3072, which will be the answer. Of course, what you could also do is you could use the formula to get there a little bit faster. Okay, what we could say is our starting value is 12. Our R value is two. And what we'll do is raise it to the appropriate power. To get from the third term to the 11th term, you'd have to multiply by two eight times. So we'll take 12 times two to the eighth power and see that we also get 3,072. Wait, there